So here we are in idle and we see the Python interactive prompt, the three greater than signs, and that's followed by the blinking cursor which is awaiting our input and we want to start our exploration of programming by considering two important things and these truly are important. One is how we get comments in our code and the other is how we obtain output from our code. So we'll use the print function to do that. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So when it comes to commenting our code, we do just what I've done here. We start some text with that pound sign and then write any text we want. Now when I hit return, I just get the interactive prompt back and that's again followed by the cursor. So a comment starts with this symbol, the hash symbol, or we could call that the pound sign or maybe the number sign or if you want to impress people with how nerdy you are maybe you could call it the octothorpe so anything from the octothorpe on on a line of Python code is simply ignored so I'll hit return again we get the interactive prompt back so comments are ignored and yet I said they're very important so they may not seem important right now but as you continue on with programming you'll grow to appreciate more and more uh, how important comments are and how valuable well commented code is but without dwelling on this point the important thing to remember is everything from the hash on to the end of the line is simply ignored okay now back to the other task at hand we want to generate some output with our program. So if our programs didn't generate any output, they wouldn't be very useful. And there are different forms of output we could generate. We could generate text, say, that we could read, or maybe images, pictures, animations, something to listen to, such as music, or our computer may actually generate something we could feel. It might control an air conditioning system. But for now, we want to generate or produce text and we'll use the print function. And you notice that when I'm writing print, I'm following it by parentheses and that's indicating that it is a function. So similar to what we have in a math class in terms of functions, Functions in a computer language can take arguments, and those arguments, the things we pass into the function, will appear between these parentheses. But for now, let's try using this print function. So notice that I'm not writing a comment now. I just wrote the function name print, and in order to call this function, in order to make it do whatever it does, we have to put those parentheses. So there's an open parentheses. Uh, we won't provide any arguments right now, but we need to close parentheses. So when I hit return, Python will invoke or call this function. It'll ask print to do whatever it does. So hitting return, I get the interactive prompt back and at first glance it might look like this did nothing but it actually generated a blank line. There was no argument here and print said okay I'll print a blank line. In order to get more interesting output we have to start providing print with some arguments. Okay I mentioned computer functions are somewhat like math functions. We enclose arguments within parentheses. However, unlike a typical math function, in computer languages with computer functions, some of them can take different numbers of arguments. The print function is one such function. It could take no argument, as we've seen here, or it could take one or more arguments, and it could actually have optional arguments and we'll explore those a little bit later but let's try this let's try print and provide an argument here and I'm going to put a quotation mark hello world and then close quotes and close parentheses so between those quotation marks I've written what we call a string a string of characters and now when I hit return, we get that string back. So we get the text that we can read. 
So we're going to see that print will show up all over the place in our programs. We'll use it as a way of obtaining output, but we'll also use print as a debugging tool. Sometimes it allows us to see intermediate values within a program, and if the program's not going right, that's how we can catch that something buried inside the code isn't working properly.